copper tube. Uh, this tube, and I thought one of the most famous salmon flies going is uh, a willy gun, and there's there's a number of different uh, variations of it. So what I thought we'd do is uh, a gold-bodied willy gun. Very good spring pattern for salmon. So I'm just putting in some gold braid there. If I just start wrapping with the gold braid. I prefer the braid to tinsel because it's really tough. If you do get, you're liable to get in some Celts early spring. So Celts have got a nasty habit of shredding flies because they've got quite sharp teeth. That can make quite a mess, to be honest. So just a couple of wraps, just to... What you can do if you're just conscious of that slipping off, because tube flies can be a bit tricky, you can just do a half inch there just to hold it in place. Now, the traditional willy gun was actually a black body with a gold rib. Uh, but as I say, this is a gold, gold body one. And the wing is a mix of uh, yellow bucktail, orange bucktail, and black bucktail. All I'm going to do is just spin. I'm sort of twisting the orange and yellow bucktail between my finger and thumbs just to mix those together. So that's, that's a fairly good mix there. Just be spot on 50 50 but it's not bad now on a tube i don't know if you can see there i'll point with my scissors the end of the tube is actually there although the silicon's back here so the hook will actually sit inside the silicon so the hook will probably uh, end somewhere here where my scissor points are so what i'm going to do is make sure that that wing extends to pass where the hook will be and I've just offered up that bucktail around the shank and I'll just do, that's not very good. It's part of the reason I do the uh, half hitch. Okay, so we're back in business with that. I think I've actually gone nicking that bobbin to be honest, you keep doing that. So if I just offer up that bucktail again. And if I do a couple of loose wraps like that, I can actually search round and I'll just tease the hair round with my thumbnail just to make sure that that's wrapped all the way around. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a fairly even count. Now, in, in you can actually mix the amount of colour that you put in these flies. So if, if you've got a particularly clear fly, uh, clear water, you might want to make it dark so you'll use a lot of black. If you've got uh, coloured water, you might want it to show up more so you'll use a lot more of the yellow and orange in the mix. So I've found that the easiest way of controlling that mix is not to mix the black in with this in the initial. What I'm gonna do is tie the black in as like a veil around the wing that I've put in at the moment. So all I've done is just snipped off some black bucktail there. I'll just roughly get them to a length that I'm happy with with my finger and thumb. Now you'll notice that I haven't trimmed off the end bits. That's because if I trim that off, it's going to leave like a lip and everything will want to slip off. I'm just off of that black all the way around. Once again, 
a couple of wraps just to hold it all in place, make sure that I'm happy with the spread of it. And I'll just use my thumbnail just to tease everything around so that it's evenly mixed around the fly like that. So I am sort of happy with that. And you can see how that's actually showing up as like a golden color. And in the water, although it's yellow, orange and black, in the water it fishes like gold. It's, it's ever so weird the way that the color goes in water. So just to try and secure that a bit better, I'm gonna put a little bead of super glue on my thread. And I'm not actually really going into the hair on that. And then I can just start to snip these off nice and tight. Now I prefer to cut things off in lots of little snips as opposed to one foul swoop, simply because it seems to keep the materials in place better for myself anyway. Then I can just trim round. Trim all the way round. There you go. So historically, that was the wheelie gun. Uh, they hadn't really used to bother with flash in there or anything, but we'll put some in. This is just like a mirror flash that I'm going to use. And all I'm going to do is just double it up so that there's two strands. And I'll put them on top and on the bottom. That's on the top. Keep them roughly the same length. That's on the bottom. So just trim that nice and neat. So that adds a little bit of flash. And just to finish it off, the original Willy gun did not have jungle cock. We'll put it on. So all I'm doing to prepare those eyes, you can see how on the normal fly feather, you've got those little fibers at the end. I'm just ripping those off just to create a nice clean nail. And that's what jungle cop eyes are called. They're called nails. So I'll just put a couple of wraps there just to Hold that in place and I'll match them up so that they're the same size and length. That just makes the fly look as if it's got some eyes. So you'll see that I'm using white thread. The reason I'm using white thread is I'm going to use some glow bright floss to create a red head. So once again, in with the super glue, just a thin little bead. And what I'm going to do there is create like a bit of a bed for the floss to suck into. That's a little whip finish. <clears throat> and here's the tricky bit. Doing the red floss head. So uh, salmon flies years ago would use red varnish as uh, the head. The problem with that is it tends to suck in and it fades over time. So just using some glow bright floss it's going on that wet 
super glue thread so it shouldn't slip. And there's there's a bit of a joke flying around on Facebook at the moment about O rings, and people want to know how to create O rings on tube flies. And this is basically it's it's a lot of wax on your thread, and then super glue to stop everything from slipping. I don't dab the actual fly with super glue. I've you find that. The material suck the super glue in and become brittle and snap off. But that's uh, that's how you do a nice little neat floss head to add a bit of colour to the fly. And literally give that another two coats, three coats of varnish, and that head will be bulletproof. Uh, that won't be coming apart. So. Oops. That's the Willy Gun tube. And you can see how it's sort of going golden in now, as opposed to yellow, orange, and black. So one of the most famous salmon uh, lures would have been a, gold, a brown and gold Devon minnow. There's probably been more salmon caught on that than anything else, and that's exactly what that's supposed to rep well it's what it looks like in the water is uh, a gold devon minnow so you wanted to know how to set it up so if we imagine that this nylon is straight onto the rod you would thread the nylon through the tube so it sticks out the end like that Tie your hook on. Normally it's a B treble, but I, I don't use trebles. So I only use singles and doubles. So tie the tube, the hook on like that. Pull it tight. And that hook pulls into the silicon, it actually sits inside the silicon like that. So it's held in place. And when the fish takes and takes the hook, the actual tube under tension rides up the nylon out the way so that just the hook's left in the fish's mouth. And what that does, it stops all the leverage of when you're playing the fish and it pulls out, out of the fish's mouth through leverage. So that's the idea and why tubes are so popular. You can use a bigger hook and it, it, it doesn't lever out of the fish's mouth. And if you consider that years ago, so before tubes like that was being used, Those are the sort of flies that was being used and you can see how big that hook is. It's as big as my finger. So you can imagine the amount of leverage that that would cause playing a fish on a, a big fly. So the tube is just a way of tying a big fly uh, and it won't do as much damage to the fish's mouth and equally uh, you won't lose too many fish as well. What was that fly called, that big one? That's, that one actually is a famous D fly called the Acroid. Oh, and it's right. Acroid. And basically, if, if your hook was too big for your materials, that would tie two flies onto one shank. Wow. So that's what's called a double Acroid. And it's a size 10 hook. And that hook actually came from Megan Boyd. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, it's worth a bit of money that flies. So that they used to call them irons because obviously they're handmade and they're pretty yeah. heavy. They get down really, uh, really well as well. So a lot of big flies like that that are left. 
when you see people talk about classic flies and they say, oh, that they're, they're always big, they weren't actually. Most flies were about that size, like what we would use today. The reason a lot of big flies are left and are, are in collections are people never hardly fished with them because you'd only use them in very high water at the start of the season. So a lot of those flies like that were actually used hauling out of a boat. You'd mm. flip your fly line out and the ghillie would just throw you around all day till it went. So uh, that's where that came from. So I thought for the next fly, do another tube again, another tube pattern. And it's another famous pattern that most salmon anglers know about. And uh, it's called the sun ray shadow. So I'm going to be using that silver that tube is. So that's aluminium. So it's lighter than that copper tube. It doesn't fish so deeply. Uh, and it's useful because the sun ray shadow basically you tr you have to fish it really fast uh, and fish sort of snap at it. And when I say snap at it, they really bang it. They'll bow wave at it, chase it, and really uh, give it a good old whack. So the original Sunray Shadow was invented in Norway, and they used squirrel tail as the underwing and monkey, believe it or not, as the overwing which is a very fine, long black uh, fur. Cites now means that the monkeys are protected, so you can only actually get monkey skin uh, off old antique jackets, and it fetches a bloody fortune. A little square like that is going to cost you about 80 quid. Yeah. You, might, you might get 20 flies out of it. So I'm just starting off with black thread again because this will have a. Does know what that? Is? Sorry. Does anybody know what fur that is? No. That's... Yeah. Say again. You're fading in now. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That that fur is polar bear. Polar bear. Yeah. So it's fairly stiff. And the reason that polar bear is used is it's, it's very translucent. It's got a shine of its own. It actually glistens. So uh, what we're going to do is use that as the underwing. And the reason we use an underwing is once again, the end of the tube is there. The hook's going to end round about there where my scissors are. So I want the underwing to actually extend to pass where the wing will be for the simple reason, because it's stiff, it will help stop the softer material, which is going to be goat, from wrapping around the hook. So I'm pulling a few wraps underneath just to kick those butt ends up. And once again, I'm not going to bother cutting that off because it creates a bit of a lip and everything wants to slip off the lip. <clears throat> this is just pearl crinkle flash. So a couple of strands and I'll just put that over the underwing. That will also ha help to uh, give, give a bit of a glint if a fish looks up at the fly. And this is the goat. And literally, this, this is exactly what mon monkey looks like, the monkey hair. I'm sure that you've seen, like, the Afghan jackets from the 60s. Yeah. Well, the black, the black ones were monkey, Columbus monkey. So we'll just cut a piece off and just between finger and thumb, I'm just going to pull them so that there's something like, but you want to leave the wing long and tapered. 
everybody be rushing down the second hand shops tomorrow to see if they can get an Afghan coat. Do you know how much I saw the last monkey jacket go for on eBay? Was no. over a quid. You're joking. Nope. Nope. And the Scandinavians swear by monkey. If if it's not monkey, they don't think these flies work, which I don't know how they think that the salmon know if it's monkey or not. So you can see how nice and tapered that wing is. Yeah. Although this is going to look weird, I want it to extend way past where the hook's going to be, probably twice as far. And what that does, it helps create a really mobile uh, wing. And it's that mobility that's going to attract fish. It's a bit like a snake for trout, a snake pattern. So once again, I'm going to go in with the scissors and I'm going to be very careful how I snip. I don't want to do it in one go because if I do that, the wing will move. Okay, so that's the monkey. Once again, it's going with some Mirage tinsel as a bit of flash on the outside on the black. We presume that the salmon sort of think that these are like bait fish or elvers or sand eels, something like that, that they've been feeding on at sea. So uh, as you may know, salmon don't actually feed when they're in fresh water. So uh, it's just trying to provoke that attack mode in them. So that's that. Jungle cock. For the eyes. Once again, I'm just preparing them by stripping off the side fibers just to leave enough to tie in. There you go, that's the jungle cock eyes in place. Uh, some people as well add peacock hurl as an overwing. Now, I find that the actual peacock eye hurls are very, uh, they're not very strong, they're brittle, they do snap very easily. So I actually prefer normal hurls. The problem is in packs like that is, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. They snap off, so they're not actually pointed like the, the natural hurl, the ends drop off. So all I'm gonna do is just trim that just to make it pointy. And then I'm gonna put a curve in it with my thumbnail. So that it'll sit on top of the wing like that. And if I just do a couple, just to hold it in place, I'm not that desperate about making them sit properly straight from the off, and I'll show you why in a second. <clears throat> Drop the scissors. Just 
once again I've, I've made that into a natural looking point. So if I'll cut those off <clears throat> and just, just to finish the head, just put a dab of super glue on again. So just to uh, make sure that everything sits nice and tight. Whip finish that off. And then the reason I wasn't that bothered about the, the hurl is I can start to make the hurl sit the way that I like them just by teasing them with my dubbing needle. So that'll put that curve in. And that'll get it to kick up at the end. So that'll make that look like, and you can probably see just how streamlined that is. And that's exactly how you want it. You want it to be really streamlined and thin. Uh, and it just looks, just looks like a bait fish, like a little elver or a lamprey. Uh, so that, you know, accounts for a very large percentage of fish each year. In fact, I know a guy last week who had 30-odd salmon in a week on the River Borgie up north on this. So that's that one. Uh, so that, that's the Sunray Shadow. And now, because I've knocked everything flying off here, just bear with me one sec. And we'll do, has anybody heard of a fly called the blue charm? No. Yeah. So this is just a hair wing version of the blue charm. Just bear with me, please. There you go. Right. Okay. Right then, blue charm. So I'm just going to tie this on a on a double. And this is a size ten partridge patriot double which I feel is a good, strong hook. And it's a bit stiff. I presume you all know about the wax on the nose. So start off with black thread. Break off some silver wire. And this, this is to create a tag, which, although it looks a bit fancy, there is a reason to the tag and it, it stops the wing from catching in the doubles or the trebles. 
what I'm going to do is on top, I'm just going to feed that between the two prongs of the hook underneath. So that's going to lock that tag in. And then I'll just wrap it back under. And that's in position now to be used as a rib. The tail is golden pheasant. If you haven't got lots of golden pheasant, if I was you, I'd go and get some as soon as possible because it's been sighted, it's protected. It's going to be really hard to get from China. So there's one, one tail and I've, I've put it in. It's not quite the length of the shank, shank, but if you just want a bit more presence to your tail, you can actually use two crests. You just do it to the same length. So that's what I'll do. So you can see how that's just made it stand out a bit more, the yellow. Snip it off. You'll also notice how I'm leaving everything along the whole of the shank. That keeps everything nice and uh, neat. It doesn't leave any holes or bumps along the body, so you get a nice smooth body. And once again, I'm going to do exactly the same with that with this black floss. like that, so now I can wind that. That bloody floss is broken. <laughs> Pardon me, the floss has uh, snapped, or part of it has. Which isn't very good. Shouldn't do that. Do that again. Hopefully that's better. Just cut that little tag off. So with a black floss, just nice, even touching turns, under tension, just go back along the body. A half inch in, just if you nervous with silk bodies or, or floss bodies you can actually smooth them out with using your ceramic bobbin um, holder like that just smooths everything out makes everything nice and smooth so then in even turns just use the wire just to protect that floss Bit of wax on the thread. Right. Blue charm, obviously used blue cock hackle. You see a lot of uh, salmon flies now, they use end hackles. Uh, I think it's a bit of a trend that's happened by, from people taking photos uh, simply because the macro lens always picks up on the ends of your hackles 
and uh, cock hackles because I stand out more. It picks up on those and the body's always blurred. So uh, a lot of photographers have started using hen, hen hackles, but for salmon flies, really, the majority of them are tied using cock hackles simply because it adds to the uh, translucency of the, of the fly. Half inch there. More wax. The reason I'm going to use quite a bit of wax here is I'm using squirrel tail for the wing. Squirrel tail is well known for being slippy. Uh, the original wing used to be teal with uh, bronze mollard over the top. Uh, the hair wing version's just gone straight into uh, squirrel. Fish is just as well. It's just that squirrel is slippy to tie in, so I always like quite a lot of wax. And I'm just going to pull out the under fur or any loose bits. Basically, you want it to be about as long as the tail, perhaps a little bit longer, just to get the proportions right. And we'll go. One wrap, two wrap, three. Underneath, over the top, underneath, over the top. I've just found that that underneath and over the top, it pinches the hair. So it stops it from pulling out so easy. Uh, what it also does as well is, I don't know if you can see, it's actually kicked my butt ends up in the air, which makes it easier to tie off. So once again, I'll do that in a couple of snips so that it doesn't, all to the I'll just put a dab of super glue in again. And then that would that would still catch fish, but uh, salmon anglers have a fascination with jungle cock eyes, so I'll, I'll put a couple of jungle cock eyes on just to finish it off. I really don't think it makes that much difference to the fish. And what you can do as well is break the back of the hair slightly. So all I'm doing is rubbing my finger up, the pushing it up the same, the wrong way. And it puts a slight kink in the wing to make it lie flat. The same on the other side. Just match those eyes up. I'll just cut those stub ends off.
So there you go. That's the blue charm. Just needs a couple of coats of varnish. As I say, if you want your wing to sit lower, you just break the back of it like that. And that's nice. Charm, which has accounted for thousands of fish over the years. So there you go. That's that's what I had planned. I think because there's not so many people, there's not been so many questions. <laughs> We're shy. <laughs> it's, it's Easter, isn't it? I, I mean, the roads was horrendous. The motorway. Yeah. So I can only imagine how many people are going around. Sounds like chaos on on the radio because I was listening to the radio. Uh, there's traffic problems all over. And they're doing and they're doing work on the railways, so you can't catch a train to where you're going. Uh, that's yeah, they've closed Euston, haven't they? Yeah, for the weekend. Do you thinking that's handy? <laughs> Army. <laughs> Army. But the, uh, so, so those flies. That's basically a spring pattern. So they'll see you through spring. If you get flood, that you'd be using that, and at the back end, that will be used. Some ray shadow when there's fresh fish around, that always works because they're fairly snappy. Salmon can be snappy when they first cup come into the river system. And if fish fish are in uh, low water, low clear water during the summer, uh, you can use a blue charm. Uh, very well known little uh, summer pattern. So uh, basically in those three patterns there, you're covered for quite a bit of your season. Uh, fishing, depending on which, and that that blue charm as well is really good for sea trout or suing. When do they use a stoat's tail then? A stoat's tail is uh, basically all black with a yellow tail. It, it's exactly the same tie-in as that, but black squirrel and black cock hackle. Uh, mm -hmm. And the stoat's tail's used in the summer. Uh, clear water again. When the fish have seen a few flies and they're a bit nervous of big stuff, big bright stuff, that's when the small dull, dull patterns start to pay dividends. It's good. Magic, thanks, Joe. Thank you okay. very much. Really no. good. Cheers. <laughs> you take care. And you. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend, Stu. Take care, have, mate. Have a good Easter. Ta-da. Bye. Take care, mate.